Monique Borrow. Monique Borrow is uh, the president of the Bentley Foundation, and she is a, a cybersecurity expert for uh, decades, even though she looks uh, uh, very young. So uh, it's probably uh, one and a half uh, decades. And she has been uh, you know, a, a, a evangelist CTO for Cisco. She has a global experience. And now recently she's getting involved at the cutting edge of new decentralized security models and so on. She's going to introduce uh, uh, some of this uh, tonight. Thank you, Monica. Monica, so, that is a lovely presentation, uh, introduction. I'm well, not after my own heart. Uh -huh. um, so I'm very happy to be here with you both, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak to you all. I will take the opportunity to plug that uh, there is Swiss Cybersecurity Days that will be in free book on uh, February 12th to the 14th, so there will be even more interesting conversations occurring. Um, I keep hearing this uh, this pain, this sort of dialectic between cost and implementation. And I think, uh, and it's all about safety at the end of the day. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful about how we frame that. The reason is, is that uh, when you fail, you make front page news. And we know what that can look like. It can be very, very painful. So um, let me kind of frame the discussion a little bit. My discussions around what's happening in industrial uh, IoT, uh, 5G coming in, and all of this, what it means in terms of, of, of security overall, the path to it. And um, this, what I'll call hyper-connectedness. The hyper-connectedness has some implications for us all, and that is, that is security. That is safety, and that is also this uh, issue with, with privacy. By the way, um, this is a, a, a question. Uh, when was National Privacy Day? Mm -hmm. It was January 28th, Data Privacy Day. So just to, to let you know, security and privacy are always going to be told. I always believe in that because it's very interesting. I was just in Davos, and we were having some creepy conversations, which I thought was interesting because it's also about how intrusive technologies can be, and it can be very creepy. Um, and with that, you will know that I'm very, very uh, forthright in ethics. So, you know, the way to frame it is how your, you know, it's safety, it's, it's what you're doing in this particular space, particularly with uh, security, the authorization, we call it the notion of identity. And if you can think about it, things are going to have identities. They will, they do. Identities talking to identities, talking to identities. And then, of course, privacy, this, this, this issue between what is it that you will selectively um, own or control, or if control is an issue. Now, I was at the Facebook F8 conference, where I participated it, in it last, this past May, and every, every keynote speech was around privacy, which is interesting, considering that the person who was talking about it said privacy was dead several years ago. But let us, let us agree that this, these two issues are very, very uh, fundamental to whatever it is we're developing, given this hyperconnectivity that we're talking about. And for banks, for institutions, we are talking about trust. Trust. And I can tell you every single day, Credit Suisse or UBS or whatever bank is continually tested, being tested by, by hacks. They're coming in. We know it. We know it. I talked about this before, even our critical infrastructure. So it's every single day there's a defensive posture. Why? Because you have assets. You have assets. We have assets. So that's really, really uh, very, very important. And then, of course, you know, there's a business impact. These are examples of what happens when you have customer trust. These are, these are just, just a snapshot of headlines, and headlines are going every single, every single day. One of my colleagues, Nick Mayancourt, if you watched television last week, he was talking about hospitals and ransomware. You know, <coughs> safety, okay? And so, so very, very, very important to, to think about this, this issue. But with, with hyperconnectivity, what we have is, you know, over the, at least over the past 90, uh, two years, you've got 90% of the data plus, and it's going more and more and more, more produced. What does that mean? And we're talking about you and things, things being you, you know, all of that. And next generation identity, something that we kind of put in this next generation is 
Okay, what a self-sovereign I'm going to be about. I'm, just, I'm talking to some people in the pharmaceutical industry and that becomes an interesting space for them. Right, what does that mean? Uh, could you be putting yourself, uh, you know, it's a Copernican revolution, could you be putting yourself in the middle of that? And of course you get into all of the magic sauces of ABCs with zero knowledge proofing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we, we're moving, right? We moved from this you and Orc. I'm trusting you, Kai, with my data. And then, of course, you got, uh, you know, maybe a third party identity provider or whatever that may look like. And then you've got, you get into sort of this peer to peer model of uh, self sovereign identities, what you're choosing to, to sh share, how you're choosing to do that. You being in the, in the middle of this, what I'll call the Copernican Revolution. Think about the devices. Think about the devices that are actually being made. You know, and I, it, it's very interesting to think about whether or not you have Alexa at home and all of this kind of magical stuff, which kind of scares the crap out of me, really. Now, that is the dialectic we have between convenience, I just want Alexa to play music for me today, to, to what is being read about you or heard about you in terms of profiling your behavioral patterns. Right? And so it becomes a very, very, very disconcerting. And so we are now looking at, you know, I'll go through this customer um, experience, but when we're talking about 5G, we're talking about the promise of streaming and everything, connected cars and all of this wonderful stuff, then you have to look at um, what is that going to mean from a safety perspective? Because when I think about security, and things, I'm thinking about safety overall. And so that becomes a, a very, very, very uh, thing that we have to be concerned with. I'm not here to, to dis, uh, dis, if you will, to, to uh, put anything in conflict with 5G, but I have to say, we have to look at what the security, underpinning security aspects will that mean in terms of safety. Now, from business, from a business perspective, I mean, people are looking at, hey, look, this is what I'm, uh, what I'm going to be dealing with. These are the use cases for 5G. Uh, people are, looking, are talking about tactile internet. They're talking about, you know, the stadium for face of videos. Um, they're looking at mobility and high-speed trains and cars. So there are use cases coming up more and more, and so we have to be able to correct correlate these use cases for the use of 5G and or industrial internet things to what it will mean in safety. To what it will mean in safety, to what that correlation will be in terms of uh, privacy and law. And so, uh, you know, lots and lots of uh, positive things that are coming out in terms of the business value. But I will just say this, because I'm wanting to leave you with one thing. I always like to play this, but I will say this. Remember one thing, whatever you do in building things, plastic, metal, or even living tissue, 3D printing has been around this is, since This is something about even the what it for, means for, for, us. for us. And so far, it's still cheaper to make most large volume consumer goods like bottle caps using traditional methods. But as Miles O'Brien reports, recent advances could launch 3D printing into a new era. 3D it's printing subject of science leading edge story, which airs every Wednesday. Just another day in an office park. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill that, because I can. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I can. And here's, here's the thing that I wanna, wanna say. Whatever we do, put, put, put a safety and privacy correlation to what it is you're developing. Put an ethics correlation to what it is you're developing. You know, this is very, very important because uh, in my Davos experience, we were talking about ethics at the end of the day. It was really an industry, interesting debate. And because you get into who's developing for what purpose and, and, and for why. I think uh, the other thing is, the last thing is education is so important. What does, I was in, uh, I was in pre, uh, Swiss cybersecurity days last year, and a citizen was wondering, is this project überhaupt, überhaupt cybersecurity gemisch? What does it mean? And the thing of it is, if the consumer and the citizen doesn't know, we, we are failing here. And the last, very, very last thing is, 
talking about e-voting and e-government, all of this. How many of you have attended Black Hat? You know, the Black Hat Conference in, in Las Vegas? So in, to, in 2018, they, all, they had Black Hat for kids between the ages of 5 and 13, 14 years old. 5 and 14. So while we're talking about digital, you know, teaching kids robotics here, teaching kids cybersecurity is really cool. Really cool. So they gave them the voting machine, 2016 voting, e -vote, the voting machine problem that you know where the Russians hacked. They gave them that problem. A 13 year old kid did it in five minutes. In five minutes. 13 years old. So I leave it to you because education is very, very, very important. Call to action, but most importantly, always question where safety involved in this. Thank you.